driving a vehicle without license it is not safe to the driver as well as pedestrian same way supplying the parts without PSW is not safe to the customer and supplier. So in this video we will see detaily about PSW. So we will have 4 chapters in this video. So first one is what is PSW and why it is important and an example of PSW and fourth one is uh, 5 common mistakes everybody does during the preparation of PSW. What is PSW? It is the abbreviation of part submission warrant. So whenever supplier submits the PSW that means he completed the PPAP with understanding all the customer requirement and the production will meet all the requirement consistently. That confidence he creates with all the documents and evidences and along with that he is giving a agreement and warrant through PSW that that is a commitment from the supplier side and customer side he gives the sign of this PSW that means he gives a certification to start the mass production at supplier end. PSW is outcome of PPAP completion. So why it is important? So there are four points why it is important. First one is so it gives a clarity that supplier understood all the technical requirements and if sub customer gives approval that means he gives a go ahead for the start of production. And third one is after completion of complete PPAP then only PSW is submitted that means it is only certificate filled by supplier and approved by customer. So completion of all process properly stages wise all new development process of at supplier end is properly followed that evidences is attached in the PPAP that means when he is submitting the PSW that is everything is planned and executed well so that it gives a evidence to the customer. So the final one is it is the future reference for all audits all uh, future production supplies for everything it act as a certification and it gives a future reference. Friends let us understand one sample PSW now. So the format can be downloaded from website any websites otherwise you can get it from the customer. So first the part name is the first one you have to mention the part name and part number given by the customer, customer drawing. The second one is whether you are meeting all safety and uh, regulation, government regulations, it will be, it should be yes. If there is any deviations, it has to be corrected and engineering level, it will be mentioned in the drawing. So that has to be mentioned along with the engineering dates, change dates. If there is any additional changes, if it is proposed from your side, so that document has to be attached that is a supplier engineering change request. So if there is any proposal as given from your side that has to be attached along with the serial number of the document has to be mentioned over here with the date. And some cases drawing number and uh, uh, part number may be different. So in that case you have to mention the drawing number and information and the purchase order the order given by the customer that purchase order number and weight of the pro final product that has to be measured. 4 5 parts have to be measured through weighing scale and the average has to be mentioned over here. And the list of checking aids, whatever the checking instruments going to be used in this product that is one of the part of PPAP document. So that list has to be updated in the PPAP document that is list serial number and whatever the engineering change it is being followed for this checking aids that all information has to be mentioned in this line with the number checking it list uh, document number and the engineering level for which it is being used that engineering number and the engineering change date. And coming to the next stage is supplier manufacturing information supplier name and vendor code whatever given by the customer and address and all the information has to be there and submission information has to be there what all the submission you are giving in the, along with this PSW dimensional reports and functional material test reports if it is applicable for appearance then appearance report should be there and customer information should be there what customer name buyer code and buyer name and application here it is mentioned th means transmission number or model number has to be there application model number should be there and next to information related to the environment and other safety 
this does this part contain any restricted or reportable substance it should not be there and plastic parts are having proper marking i mean grade marking so in this case it is not applicable so next one is very important one it's a reason for submission so we have already learned there are multiple reasons for which we are, we are submitting the ppap in our ppap video so if you want to get a clarity about this information you can watch my ppap video and there are multiple reason either initial submission engineering change tool transfer corrections of discrepancy or tool inactive location change or additional capacity addition whatever the reason you have to mention the reason you have to tick the particular men reason for submission and the level of submission there are five levels we have already learned in so one is only warrant two is warrant with limited data of suppliers as per supplier and level 3 is submission of all requirement data level 4 is warrant along with the limited data as per customer fifth one is all the data all applicable data are reviewed at on site so this has to be properly selected and submission results like mentioned above here again re some some cases some psw formats it is there in multiple times sometimes it is there in one single line so you have to select what all the results you are submitting dimensional results material test and statistical process package along with if there is any appearance related requirement then appearance report and you are declaring that these results are all meeting to the drawing and specific customer requirements if no you have to give a explanation if you might have applied for any engineering change like we mentioned above if that such a case you have to attach the document over here in the backup and you have to mention no and you have to give explanation short in the side and next one is mold cavity and production process you have to mention the production process name and tool details in the in this line and next one is very important declaration of run at rate so how many numbers you are able to produce in 8 hours excluding rejections and other losses that numbers has to be mentioned in the declaration so it 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 gives a confidence it gives a declaration to the customer that with meeting all the drawing specification i am able to produce this much quantity per 8 hour so that they they will be just matching with their requirements per shift so it will be balanced if it is less then they may be planning for a uh, giving you some more additional capacity increment so that can be planned accordingly so finally the authorized person may be qa head or plan dad whoever is authorized as per the customer so their name and their signature with all contact details has to be mentioned over here and the same thing similar way customer side customer supplier quality engineer or managers whoever is authorized they will be uh, writing their name and they will be giving sign signature over here and that will be written back to you and here if you look at the disposition there are three stages approved rejected and others so approved means psw is approved that means ppap is approved and you can start for a mass production if it is rejected it, there may be a reason for rejection and that case it will be a re uh, re ppap has to be done and correction to be done in the process or and resubmission should be done and there is one more category it's other that is the interim approval stage you have to understand what is the interim approval stage sometimes we may not be able to meet some certain parameters that may not impact the performance or fitment at customer end so in such a cases there will be a interim approval given that that time because has customers should meet their production targets or the project targets so they will be giving a uh, mutually deviation agreed deviation so in that deviation that particular quantity either quantity or the time period will be mentioned till that time period that interim approval will be given so in that interim approval you can supply the products and parallelly out to correct the process and do the reppap and submit the final ppap for proper approval same way part functional approval here also fitment or validation trials can be done at customer end and there will be also approval will be given but for us it's very important is part warrant disposition so either it's approved or rejected and third category we should understand interim approval that has to be mutually agreed and deviation should be signed off by the 
custom. Friends, let us understand now about the five mistakes made during the PSW preparation. So mistake number one, first mistake is people miss to mention the part weight in the PSW. So you have to mention the final product weight in the PSW. It is mandatory for all future references. So mistake number two, part application that is not at all mentioned in the PSW. Part application means whatever the part you are manufacturing, where which model it is getting fitted and what is the application. For example, if it is fitted into the uh, some specific model vehicles, cars or uh, trucks or anything, you have to mention the model name and whether it is applied in the cabin, engine or in the transmission or in the axle, that information also along with the model, it has to be updated. Third mistake is the clarity on level of submission. So it is not mandatory every time we have to submit the level 3. So in non-critical parts, you can discuss with your customers and as a supplier, you can conclude or decide the level of submission. So irrespective of level 3, sometimes on based on the non-criticality, you can go for a level 2 or level 4 PPAS where your documentation will be reduced. So unwanted time will be saved. So that the clarity should be there for the level of submission and the correct level should be mentioned over here. And mistake number four is, so people miss to mention the number of moles or number of cavities used in the process as well as the production process details. Either it's a manufacturing process or injection molding or, or die casting or any forging, hammer forging, whatever the process is followed that has to be mentioned along with the number of tools, moles, cavities followed in the process because cavities and moles majorly given by the customers. So that information has to be mentioned here. And fifth mistake is, it's very important. Everybody, I mean, sometimes they miss to mention the run net rate or sometimes they calculate theoretically and mention the run net rate in the PSW. It is absolutely wrong because the run net rate, whatever you are mentioning over here, it will be demanded by the customer at any uh, conditions. So in that can run a trade, you have to give the products without any quality constraints. So that is what it has to be practically evaluated with the eight hour production and calculated in the practical way. And that has to be mentioned here. I mean, excluding your losses and excluding your rejections, uh, excluding everything, the final output of a eight hours production, it, to, it has to be properly validated in the practical way and that value has to be mentioned, that quantity has to be mentioned in the uh, run at rate. It is very important to mention the run at rate, but it should not be the theoretical way. Friends, thanks for watching this video. Hope you got a basic clarity about the PSW. Keep watching our PPAP series and if you have any comments, please mention the comment section. Thanks for watching. Thank you.